Right. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we would like to welcome you <laughs> to Fabric Chicks Facebook Live at Noon. Here's I thought Gracie I was supposed to be behind and the all camera. glory. Oh, um, there's yeah, the beach wait, behind there us. Is. There we go. What? Oh, okay, Gracie's go. going to do some crazy stuff with her hair. Yeah. That's my oh, demo. Dear. Learn how to do that, guys. Okay. Hi, Anna Simpson. The girls are loving your air mattress, except for that <laughs> they were lazy last night and didn't add air to it. So this morning, sleeping they the were sleeping on the ground. <laughs> hey, Peggy. Um, okay, so Hi. today we have... Here, Gracie, you can be the videoer. Yeah. Um, so today we have... A few different demos to do. I have been um, trying to do some hand embroidery um, from the Creative Stitches from Sue Spargo's second edition. I've decided that maybe I need to practice on like a piece of paper or a piece of scrap um, fabric because the stitches are kind of tricky a little bit. Or I think maybe because I'm dyslexic, I can't figure out which way the needle needs to go under the thread. So, hi Carolyn. So I am struggling hi, a little Christy. bit with the stitches, but you gonna talk over me. Oh, sorry, Gracie. Go ahead. You do your talking. Um. Yeah, that's pretty much all I had. Okay. So, <laughs> so we'd like to welcome Hannah, Gracie's friend. Oh yeah, hi um, Hannah. She's going to be giving us her Look honest opinion about some different things. <laughs> So last week, um, Peggy said the colonial stitch is better than French knots when we showed this tree that we were doing. So, um, so we kind of did some research and we honestly, Hana, yeah. in your professional opinion uh -huh. as a non-sewer, <laughs> what is the difference between a colonial knot, a Chinese knot, and a French knot? What I... can you tell? couldn't tell anything because they all look identical besides in the book it says to sew it differently but if you look at all the images of the knots in the finished product they all look exactly the same okay girl so She's i'm planning on being a lawyer <laughs> very good very good um okay so i'm gonna show you i can't find the french knot at the moment i know it's here um what is max looking at here i'll hold it okay um, okay, so hang on a second. I'm trying to find the French knot. I don't know why it wouldn't be next to the colonial knot. There's and the, the, okay. There's Max. Yeah. Okay, Gracie, again. so let's zoom in. So here is a colonial knot. Okay? And then here is a Chinese knot. So see the Chinese knot and the colonial knot, the difference between the two, I'm, I can't really tell. And then you add in the French knot here. So here's the French knot, and then here is the colonial knot. And then when I try to read the directions for the different knots, I honestly can't tell which knot I'm doing. So, so here's my finished project, and I'm doing the knot that I learned as a kid. So I have no idea whether I'm doing a French knot, a colonial knot, or a Chinese knot. So somebody out there with more experience than me, um, if you could tell us what the difference is, that would be great. Okay, let me see. Um, oh my gosh, there's so many. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Christy. Hi, Linda. Um, we are having a good time. We're in Santa Cruz. Um, but I'm making the girls sew before they can go to the beach. Um, hey, Mary Beattie. Wait, it says bring them on camera. Hey, Shirley. Wait, bring them on camera? <laughs> Mary Beattie. It says I can bring you on camera. I don't know why. Do you want to come on camera? Okay, so girls, let us know what you think about the French knots. So I'm just going to demo real quick here. I'm doing, um, so on this project, I this is the Peacemakers um, Seasons Through the Year tree. So I did French knots here. I did machine stitching here to create some texture. And then I played with all the different fancy stitches on my machine and different kinds of threads. So here I've got a wool thread. 
Um, here I did a little back stitch by hand with a wool thread. This was just a 50 weight thread on my machine. Um, this here is a metallic eight weight and I actually couched it on or tacked it on One with second. my machine. There we go. <laughs> um, very blurry. Did you catch up with me? Sure, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Grady's yeah. do, Gracie's doing our um videographing. So she's videographing. Yeah, video videographing. Videoing. Okay, videoing. Video and then here is it's not really Recording. a back stitch because yeah. I wanted it to, or a chain stitch because I wanted it to be more knotted. So that's what I'm gonna show you. And I'm sure that it probably is a stitch that has a name but I don't know what it is it's something that I probably just picked up over the years so I'm just gonna come here and because it's crooked I don't want to do the chain stitch so I'm just coming down and then picking it up here and I'm sure that it does have a name but when it gets more crooked I go bigger stitches and that's kind of what I'm finding is a little bit tricky um, and look at it likes to get caught on my fidget spinner um, so that's kind of the little downfall that I'm finding with this is that um, I'm just kind of you might have to go up above me Gracie um, I never said I was good at this <laughs> okay well try your best Good close-ups. Thank you. So this is what we're trying to achieve. Here, Hannah, you can read the comments Best close-ups. Thank you. Um, see, I'm doing great, and I know it. Um, hello. Okay, so we're just going to kind of show you what we've been working on. We've been also trying to go down to the beach. Yesterday we went swimming for, um, well, I got into my chest before I decided it really was too cold. Gracie went all the way under. Um, it was like a belly flop. It was very majestic. Well, and it was like in the shower a little bit, so it didn't really make any sense to me. But, and then Hannah was a little bit scaredy cat. She went to her knees. Did you see any sharks? No, we saw what Devin thought was a dolphin. Multiple whales. Probably two whales. Okay, so see how if I just do a straight stitch like that, it doesn't go on the line? But if I take this and kind of couch it or tack it right here, then it will stay on whatever line I want it to. It will hold the curve. So that's just kind of what I'm doing here. Um, and then I'm not real consistent with the stitches being um, exactly the same size. As you know, I'm not consistent in anything with my life. So <laughs> it tends to. I got a knot back here. I got a pull it Please be professional about this. Um, Grace, you could stand up. Um, I can see perfectly fine, thank you. Oh, goodness. Is my finger Where's... over the mic? I don't know. Where's the mic? Oh. <laughs> so if you hold it, like, right here. You, you think the mic's on the back? No, I think the mic is right here and right here. Okay, my fingers aren't right there, are they? Mm. Uh, okay. So... Girls, it's really hard. Roger's right here, and I know he's our professional videographer. They said that it was better when I do it. He doesn't want to get up. He's watching his news. I haven't been zooming in on your boobs, have I? Well, that's true. Exactly. I win. Okay, let's try to keep this professional, Gracie. We that might have new people watching. That was so for those of you who are new, um, you want to come? Gracie, it, this is a family-run operation, so sometimes you get a little bit of bickering between the families. It's like I say, it's like a reality show for quilters and sewers. So we used to try to come up with new projects for every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, except for it was exhausting. So now we just show you whatever we're working on in the moment. So there's the straight stitch that's going to go along this fence. So all we're doing is, and I think this is a great way 
to um, to practice your stitches and kind of fine tune your stitches and um, learn about your sewing machine also because all of these crazy quilted stitches are done on your machine with your fancy stitches but using different kinds of threads. So this is a wool 12 weight here and um, this is a 50 weight here um, and we've got a bunch of other ones. So just if you're new, here's some other ones that we've already finished. Um, and we're going to, I'm going to make them so that they can be hung on the racks that um, Penny's husband made. But so here are some other ones that we've done some of the fancy stitches exploring on. And then here I just did some thread painting on the tree and, um, this one, I did all the pine needles with a 12 weight, um, this is a, the lighter green is a 12 weight wool and the darker green is just a 12 weight cotton. And then I did some kind of a knot, French knot, colonial knot, Chinese knot, not really sure what kind of knot. Um, but it gives you kind of a fun way to practice all of your stitches. Um, and then, do you have any comments, Gracie? I don't know. Okay, and then the next <laughs> thing that Gracie is, um, Hana. So we're working on this City Cats quilt by, um, in the beginning. And so Hana, who's never sewn or used fusible before, she traced out our cats onto Steema Seam 2, which is what I prefer. I like Steema Seam 2 because it has a temporary hold. And then we ironed them on to the wrong side of your fabric and then cut it out again. So it's a two-step process. You have to trace it onto your steamer seam. Then you have to cut it out, lay it on your fabric, and then cut it out again. And then um, we didn't cut our sides yet because this is how far we've gotten. But I told the girls they have to finish this whole quilt before we can go to the Winchester Mystery House tomorrow. So we'll see how that goes. Um, hey, Penny. Hey, Nan. So this is what the girls are going to work on today before they go down to the beach to, sew, to swim. Um, and we'll see. It looks like it could be warmer today. I feel like it's hotter. Ooh, there's, a, there's like five people out on our beach. It feels like it's crowded today. Um, but then we have a couple of other. So this is the bird that um, we ironed on to upholstery fabric. So it's kind of exciting since we're not doing shows. When we're doing shows, we have to be really consistent and whatever we make, we have to have the exact things to sell. <laughs> Whoops, here's our dog who thinks he's part of this project and he's on the dining room table. Um, so he knows better than that. Um, so. So I'm playing, it's kind of fun for me because I can play with different fibers and different textures and different kinds of things. So I ironed my wool onto upholstery fabric. I don't know if you can see the texture of the roses there. And then here I'm doing a border stitch. So I'm just going to do a couple of these stitches real quick so you can see it. So I'm going to come out here, come in. And I tried some others, but I could not get, um, I couldn't get the hang of it. So um, Barbara Cavanaugh is going to demo during the next um, applique club. She'll be at the shop. So we'll video her. She's already done quite a few of these. And it is a little bit trickier going through the upholstery fabric because it is thicker, but I think it's going to be worth it for the effect. And if you have arthritis, you could totally do these stitches on your um, machine. You do not have to do them by hand. So that's what it's going to look like. And then I think I'm going to do, I don't know if it's a Chinese knot, a colonial knot, or a French knot. But I think I'm going to do a, a knot at each of those points. And then I'm going to do some fill-in work. Because if you look at the beauty and the charm of... Um, Sue Spargo's book and all of her work is all of her fill-in stuff. So let me see. She's got some birds here that are really cute. Uh, let me see if I can find it. 
Okay, Gracie, tell them a joke. They've been missing your jokes. And Sunday, I'm stopping at Penny's house. So maybe um, Peggy might be there, I think. She's bringing me spaghetti sauce and all kinds of fun stuff. So if she's there, we might be able to get her to do a um, quick little Facebook Live on... Um, a Facebook Live on the difference between the colonial knot, the French knot, and the Chinese knot. Because to us, to the layman, they're all the same. And then um, Hannah here used our three different scissors, so I told her to be our little security check um, and tell us which scissors did you like the best. So we gave her a pair of Tula Pink scissors, a pair of... Where are all the scissors? A pair of gingers, a pair of Tula Pink, and a pair of gingers. Um, which ones did you like the best? Uh, I like the blue ones. The perfect scissors. Perfect scissors. Were really perfect. And why? Yeah, they were because you could do intricate cuts because I was cutting out uh, the hats. Big words. Yeah, you could, you know, get really close to the lines. And these ones were just too bulky. So... Okay, so there you go, girls. From the from the mouth of somebody who has not been tainted and who is not getting paid by any of the different companies to um, to advertise for them. So out of the three pairs of scissors, her favorite were the perfect scissors. Um, okay, so here is kind of what we're going to be doing with the birds. Just doing something fun and funky. And we'll be posting the bird patterns from Eleanor Peace Bailey on our Fabric Chick Stitch Along probably when we get back. I just wanted to do a couple um, in advance so that I could give you any tips or tricks that I or problems that I encounter. Okay, any questions? There's no questions coming up on mine. It just says who's watching and if we want to bring you on camera. Oh, I have a ton. <laughs> okay, so read your comments. Wait, I have to scroll up. They look the same to me. This is about the stitches. That was Who was that? A while ago. Christy. Christy, they look exactly the same. I can't tell Shirley the difference. Shirley says the outcome looks the same. Yes, I agree, Shirley. Cindy says the French knot is the easiest. Nope. Well, and I don't even know. I always thought that I was doing a French knot, but now I'm not even sure what kind of a knot I was actually doing. And then uh, Carolyn says the French knot may be a little smaller. Which one is easier to do? But I, doesn't it just depend on how many times you wrap it, how big it is? Because on mine, I wrapped some of them once and some of them four times so that I would get a variety of, um, sti of, of sizes. So I think, to me, it's just how many times you wrap it. But the book, it's the way you twist the thread under or over your needle. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Louise said, could it be because of the amount of wraps around the needle or perhaps the thread or wool yarn? Yes, totally. There we go. That's totally a true statement. So I don't know why we have three different kinds of um, knots. Uh, Diana said, I think it's where you live. That's what they call it. Yeah. Well, it could be, except but, for that it's in Sue Spargo's. Sue Spargo, in her book, has the three different knots. Oh. Look, Peggy gave us some info. Peggy's the smart one about the this. The colonial knots always comes out tight. Sometimes the French knots That's slips true. a little. That's true. The thread may be looser on the French knot. I'll show you when I see you. Okay. Okay, cool. Move it on. Um, doing a great job, Gracie. Oh, thanks. I know. Okay, so then here's another stitch. So I was trying to get um, some handwork ready because they don't like it when I sew. We're in this tiny little um, bungalow kind of a thing. And so when I sew, when they're trying to watch movies, it irritates them. So I was trying to get hand work. So here is, a, I, I call it a herringbone stitch. I'm not really sure what the technical term is. Um, but there are a lot of stitches that I learned when I was a kid. And so, um, so now I've got to like learn and see what the correct way to do it is. So that's all we have to show. Do you have any more comments? That's what I was doing, but you interrupted okay, me. Okay, sorry. Uh, Picky says I want the tree panel. Okay. 
Um, if I demo this tree panel enough, you're all going to end up with it. How long will you be there in cruise? Um, we're here. Well, if you're going to burglarize our house, we're coming home today. But if you're not burglarizing our house, because our husband, my Roger's upset that everybody knows we're out of town. Um, we are coming home next Sunday. So we'll be uh, home Sunday. I'll be there next Tuesday. Who Where? is? Who is? Cindy. At the shop. Cindy who? Thompson. Cindy Thompson, you're going to be in Santa Cruz next Tuesday or at the shop next Tuesday? Weight of tree threads. Uh, I think we just went over that. <laughs> so on the tree, I've used all different kinds of threads. Uh, let me see. There's one that I did last night. Um... <laughs> Okay, so look at this one. I kind of played with filling it in. So I did a ton of thread stitching, and I did it with 50 weight thread. And then this one, I just did a, um, no, this is a 12 weight thread here. And then this one is a 50 weight variegated thread. So this is a 50 weight, and I just kind of did little circles because that's what it had on the pattern. And then this, so you can see the difference between a 12 weight and a 50 weight. And here you could really fill in your entire piece. So I was looking at some of the um, Sue Spargo where she really um, stitches in the entire piece. You could do anything that we're doing by hand, you can do by machine. Because I know some of us, our arthritis is um, inhibits us from doing handwork. So this one here, I this is like a little bird's nest. I need to sew the bird still so he pops out of there. But I had a, a mess of threads, so I just puddled it here on the nest and scooched it in and then stitched it down. So kind of like couching, I just tacked a bunch of loose threads there. Um, so it's really just been kind of fun to experiment with a bunch of different stitches. And what I love about this is that kind of the homework is done for you you have a pattern and you can just decide how to embellish it. Where if you're doing a um, something from scratch, you have to um, trace the pattern, you have to come up with everything yourself. And like we learned with um, the E.E. E. Shank rep, Trish, last week, we could draw it, um, trace it, color it, and then embellish it with our stitches. Um, so there's tons of different ideas, and that's kind of our idea of showing you different techniques every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, is so that you can learn um, what your options are, because there's so many options out there, and you just have to start playing. And if you get a panel, panels are my favorite way to start playing, because it teaches me the techniques without a lot of investment. Like if you're doing a collage quilt and you spend a week building your collage animal, then you're going to be afraid to do any stitches because you don't want to wreck it. So um, kind of like our cats. Is Diana Hensley on there? I mean, I guess. I don't know. Diana, did you do your cat? Have I think you worked I on, saw her. Have you worked on your cat since we um, did, did our little class? So we did... Um, this is Lorraine Turner's pattern for her cats. So we built our collage, and I know it looks like crap right now. You can't really tell what it is. But here's our collage, which we spent all evening building. And now we're going to add chenille it to it. So you, the more you invest in the prep work, the more you're not going to want to do the stitching if you're just learning and experimenting. So, um, so panels are a great way to learn um, control. Like even just this tree, learning how to thread paint this tree, free motion style. And if you haven't watched our demos on free motion stitching, just go back to Monday and previous um, shows and you'll be able to see how easy it is to do free motion stitching. Okay, any questions, Gracie? Because mine does not have... Pattern for cat, where do I look for it? Who is it? Mary. Mary Vitti? Yeah. Mary, I'll get you one. I have to order more. Uh, Gracie's friend's name. Hana. Hana. Um, I'm going to teach him how to sew today. 
Although they're going to kind of fight with me because they're ready to go to the beach. True. Um, you can find the answers between the French knot and colonial knots on da -da -da, the website. Um, it has to do with the twist around the needle and or the way it's a figure eight twist on the colonial needle. Haven't got the Chinese that was written in Chinese and... Who said that? Uh, Ro <laughs> Rosie? Not. Yeah. Is that Rosie? Okay, Rosie, we're going to research it because I looked in, for me, following the directions because I'm dyslexic, I always get confused of going under the needle or over the needle. But um, at Applique Club next week, next month, um, Barbara's going to be there and she's going to help demo a bunch of the different stitches. And I think if I see it as opposed to seeing the written word, it will make more sense. What book is that? This is Sue Spargo's Creative Stitching, and we will have this on um, the next Friday's celebration. So this Friday, we're not doing a celebration, but tune in because we are interviewing Eleanor Peace Bailey. And if you don't know who Eleanor Peace Bailey is, you are not going to want to miss this. Um, Eleanor is like the queen bee of the doll making world. Well, not the queen bee. There's a few of them. Um, like Virginia Robertson, Patty Kalia, Barbara Willis. There was a gaggle of them. A gaggle. A, a gaggle. Don't um, ever say that again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but um, they were um, like the mother hens of the doll making industry. And uh, they have contributed immensely to this industry. So we're going to be interviewing Eleanor Peace Bailey on on Friday live and then we'll have a celebration the following Friday okay any other questions what's the puppy's name Max, Max. and Max is a is a pound puppy Gracie had to have him because he a was so tooth. cute he has a, he has a snaggle tooth. tooth um Gracie had to have him because he was so cute but it's ten dollars he was ten dollars she hates him he, he hates her me. And so he is now my dog, except for apparently he loves Gracie's friends. So maybe it's just Gracie he doesn't like. <laughs> All right. I, Gracie got her pound puppy and I didn't get mine. It's a pun. Are you ready, Mom? I can't do those knots, so I'm not doing it, LOL. Who <laughs> said that? Penny. Penny, I love you. I'll be at your house on Sunday. We'll do some kind of a live, a surprise live, except for it's not so surprise anymore. Some kind of surprise live at Penny's house. Because I'm picking up more frames, although I really don't know why. It's against my better judgment. I was mailing them out till 1.40 on Saturday night. Like the middle of the night, I was still trying to find boxes to fit those frames into. And when you guys get some of those boxes, you're going to say, I do not know what she was smoking when she created these boxes. Because I had to literally cut boxes down and create use two boxes to create one box it was a it was some shenanigans cindy's going to santa cruz um cindy will just miss you diana diana and we watched last night we watched the winchester movie it was like a horror film and now we're gonna go to the winchester mystery house hopefully we don't get too scared uh diana says i almost have a chenille at kitty's done the chenille is so easy to sew on. It is, but did you do the eyes already? Post a picture of your eyes. That's why I haven't done it, because I'm afraid to do the eyes. Um, Anna says, look at Max being a good boy. <laughs> I know, Anna. Okay, just so you know, Max may have bitten Anna a couple of times. I don't think Anna's a dog person. Uh -huh. Nan says, are the quilt tree quilt blocks a pattern or a kit? A panel. It's a panel. All 12 of them come in a panel. I'll I'll put it on next Friday celebration. Uh, what size needles are you using for the 12 weight thread? Um, in my machine or in for hand embroidery? On in my machine I'm using a 9014 top stitch needle and in for the embroidery I'm using a 24 chenille needle because the eye is big and I can get the 12 weight wool through it. Penny. Or the eight weight pearl cotton. Penny wants the tree panel. Okay, Penny. <laughs> Mary said whatever is in her machine at the time. That's true, Mary. I just made it up. 
I think that it's a 9012, but honestly, it's whatever's in my machine. If I can get it threaded and it doesn't shred my thread, I'm going to use it. Jan asks, Beth, where can I find the black cat pattern? Um, we have it, and we have it as a kit also. So I will get the sample done. The girls are going to get the sample done today, and then we'll mm. have it kitted and ready for next Friday's celebration. Penny said, making my chicken now. Oh, Penny, I'm, look it, it's here. My chicken is right here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work on it soon, momentarily. Um, Nan wants a panel. Okay, Nan. She also wants the book. Okay. <laughs> and then, Nan, do you still want, I have in your um, basket, I didn't ship it yet, but I have, and I know I need to go on and check. Your shipping is so weird because when I looked it up, it said that your package was in Manteo. Oh, so, she said she got the package. Okay. I forgot to tell you that. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> didn't think that one was in. I don't know. It, <laughs> like, shipping lately has been kind of not very predictable. Um, oh, but I'll double check mm -hmm. before we ship your next package. I'll double check and make sure we have everything correct. Uh, there's a great... Let me try that again. There's a great Egyptian... Museum in San Jose. Oh. Cool. Can I go see King Tut? Thank you. Maybe. We're going. Um, um, okay, what else? Um, let me see. Do you have the stuffed chicken pattern? Yes, the chicken shaman. It's by Eleanor Peace Bailey, and we will put it on next Friday's celebration. But if you comment right now that you want it, we'll go back and read the comments and already get that into your basket. We have limitless chicken shamans but sometimes we only have a limited number of different products so when you respond on monday and wednesday we put it in your basket and then we put it on the celebration in case anybody else wants it nan says it was shipped to the wrong address <laughs> yeah something we would do <laughs> well nan that's it's so bizarre because haven't you gotten packages from us before because it's we use a program and so everybody's addresses once we ship to you it's saved. So all we do is put in Nan and it fills in everything else. So for it to fill in the wrong address, so I'll go back and look at that before we send you another package. I'll, we'll talk to you and make sure that we've got the right thing saved in there. But it did say it was stuck in Manteo waiting for you. The customer had requested a hold. That's what my info said. But I think the whole post office system is screwed up. Peggy says I want the book. Okay, Peggy. And then Carolyn says, I think I want the stuffed chicken pattern. Okay. It's not too hard to make. It's super easy, and we'll do a Zoom class because that's probably the only way I'm going to finish it is if you girls are all forcing me to do it. Okay, anything else, um, girls? Rosalind, I got my package. It was like Christmas. I think I got extra. I will send a picture Monday to see if it was a mistake. Well, it could be a mistake, but sometimes I just throw in extras because I'm cleaning up and it's in my way. And so whoever's bag I'm working in, I just throw it in. So sometimes you just get extra goodies, but send me a picture and we'll double check. And then Nan says yes, but it was sent to 265 instead of 365. Which is so bizarre, Nan, because it's already programmed. So I'm going to have to really research that when I get home. I don't know. The universe has gone crazy. Um. Okay. 265 instead of 365. No, you want to ship to 365, not okay. 265. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go back and reread these and make notes. Okay, what else, girls? Any other questions before we sign out so we can go lay on the beach? So Hannah can tan one side. Yeah, he, <laughs> Hannah only tan. She got a sunburn on one butt cheek, but the other butt cheek is still white. So she's got to rotate. I told them they don't know how to... You know, in my day, you, you moved your chair with the sun, so you got an even uh, sunburn. They in one spot. They just lay in one spot, so when the sun moves, they just... We just go for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, kids these days. Okay, anything else? Uh, no. Okay. All right, girls, we're going to sign off. We're going to see how much we can get done today, and then we're going to um, join us on Friday with Eleanor Peace Bailey at noon. And um, if you have any questions that you want us to make sure we cover, send them to us in advance so that I can warn Eleanor. Although she's good at spur of the moment stuff, so don't worry too much. 
All right, we'll see you on Friday at noon with Eleanor Peace Bailey. Are you going to say bye, or is that you saying bye? <laughs> That's me saying goodbye. Oh, okay. Signing off. <laughs> Fabric Chicks at Santa Cruz Beach. Okay. Signing okay, off. Okay, let me, let me turn this.